Hello and welcome to another episode of Speaking Specs. This time we go into detail on my newest Pro Skate, the USD Shadow Eugen Enin. I brought two sizes, a 41 and a 42 one. The 42 one is a bit more rounded and the 41 is really tiny and I've put on an XS saw plate so you can see that it fits on the tiniest parts of the Shadow too. So yeah, let's go a bit into detail on my skate. The first thing that pops right into your face when you see the new model is the new ankle flap. We changed the last ankle flap that was used on the USD Shadows and now it's more similar to the Damien Wilson one from the original Shadows. It's going all the way down to the toes, so it's more connected. You have like a bit more closer feel and it's all in all giving more stability and it's stronger. I really like the feel and I'm happy how it came out. Later we'll go into detail how we came up with this and how long it took us to develop it. The next thing that pops into your eyes right away is a new tongue. You can see it. I will talk a bit more later on it. It's pretty soft. And then we brought back the shock pad. But yeah, before I open up the skate, one tiny detail. I prefer changing the toe strap to the other side. Just switch it here. Because that way, way easier if it like this to open up the whole skate because now all is on one side they so come the other way around so they're cross so if you want to have more comfy way of opening up i will change it actually we plan to do this so hopefully for the next production and next run it will be this way so yeah if you open it up you can put all the skates there's the toe strap Pretty good one. It's like a seat pad material, pretty thick, pretty nice. Some nice details. E3.2, my second model, my second pro skate after my carbon freeze. And if you put it out, you're already hearing it. We add some Velcro to the back of the cuff and the back of the liner to avoid or almost erase heel rates. The shock pad already helped with positioning your feet when I played around with samples but I still felt like we should add something to avoid the heel lift totally. And we came up with different ideas. Uh, we even played around with some pretty funky ideas I will show later. But we ended up with this way because this was the most efficient working one. And we added some rivets, you can see on the back, four. The other ones are under the strap. So that the Velcro won't come off easily. It's lasting pretty well. I was getting a sample over here. You saw it in the profiles. And the tongue, the Velcro, the shock pad, the base plate is changed, another factor. It now has like a metal plate in it. Really helps a lot, like with less parts, less weight, but also the cuffs are breaking less since we changed it to this plate. I was really surprised. Like everybody knew it was like an infamous thing back in the day with the old cuff. But since we changed it to this, I never broke a cuff in my last profiles, even in Shadow Chronicles the year before. So it's working really well. So let's put it back. Or oh, just to side. I have more than enough skates laying around here. Oop. So yeah, let's talk about a few more aspects of the skate before we go a bit into detail how we developed everything. And also, please take care while pulling out the liner. And don't just rip it out upwards, but instead take it out carefully this way so you won't rip off all the velcro on the back so yeah let's go a bit more into detail about several aspects of the skate the first thing is the color you can see the cuff and the frame have like a greenish grayish tone and actually back then when we worked around with the samples i wanted a more grayish color but some of the samples had this color and i kind of fell in love with it after a while and then i was like yeah let's go with this one i kind of liked it and now I'm pretty glad how it came out. The next thing is the liner and the tongue. We updated the tongue, this is a new one. It's really soft and you can see the ventilation holes right here. It's a 3 dab tongue. It stands for 3D anatomical padding. So it's really soft and adapting to your food. The inner material, the cushioning is pretty, pretty good. Pretty comfy, a bit thicker, but adapting to your ankles too really well. We still kept like the other shadow models, the more neoprene and softer upper area here. It's like a V-cut, it's really helpful. A tiny loophole, 
to hold your skates. And we changed the upper material of the Shadow Eclipse liner. You can see it. It's pretty good, way more resistant and longer lasting. We have some tapered material over here. Coming all black, you know me, I like to keep it simple. Some details on the back. And like already mentioned, the Velcro. Like mentioned before, on the back of the liner to keep it in place and avoid heel lift. It's not only stitched on the edges, but also stitched like a big cross all over the place. So it's lasting way better and won't come off that easy. The fit is quite, quite good. A bit wider than the previous models on the USD Shadows. And all in all, pretty good fit right out of the box. So yeah, let's go into the really tricky details. So now we do a deep dive into the developing process of a few of those parts on my new Pro Skate. Like the ankle flap, for example, took the longest because we not only needed to figure out the shape and the right position for the 45 degree strap with the buckles and stuff, but also the, the materials and like different systems, which I will go into detail in a few minutes. Uh, one of the things was that in the beginning process, we had a bit more closed flap, which was closing up the wall upper of the shoe. By the way, it had like wrinkles and was folding on the edges. So we played around with different, uh, different thicknesses and different lengths to figure out which one works the best. And you can't do for one for every half size, so you need to figure out one middle for different sizes. So it works like easier for all the different sizes that we offer for the UC Shadow. So let's show you some of the early samples. Because before we started working on the Damien Wilson inspired flap, we actually wanted to go into a totally different direction. We worked around with the ATOP system. And Matthias from PowerSlide, our boss man, sent us some funny samples that you had laying around with an ATOP system. Maybe you know it from shoes and other products like snowboard bindings and ski and stuff, which was on top of a flap. I think it was like a sample for dupe skates or something. And we played around and used some wires and I kind of played around and freestyled it onto my shadows. And actually it worked really well. The only thing is it wasn't lasting that well because all the wires been open and it was hard to hide them. And yeah, it was too dangerous if you're not a pro skater and you're still learning a lot of stuff and you fall a lot, it will just shred apart. So we came up with a sample where the wires been all inside and can move. They've been like tubes for the wires and stuff. It was really, really good. And the A-top was a bit more flat and an updated one, more minimalistic. And this one was actually amazing. I liked it a lot. This piece is still didn't been perfect with the hooks, but they actually worked. And I played around with this sample for a while, but again, same problem. Um, we've been afraid they won't last forever with all the parts and all the metal on the sides and kids can shred it down and the wire will rip off. But the main idea was really exciting for me. And we had a few problems, like it was a bit too stiff and it was hard to find a flex cut and the same problem with the length and then you need different molds for this. So yeah, in the end, because it was taking just too much time, we kind of ended up in going to a more classical direction with the Damien Wilson inspired flaps that you now know and kept this by side. But you never know, maybe in the future. I was, I was super excited about this one. So the next thing, we'll go into detail about the shoes because you saw the Velcro in the back. But before we came up with the Velcro idea, we actually played around with other ideas to fix the heel lift. Not problem, some people actually enjoy it, but for me it was like an issue and I wanted to get rid of the heel lift. So we came up with ideas like changing the sole of the shoe and make it a bit more fitting and different stuff, but it was hard to find the original sole molds and in other stories it's pretty hard sometimes. Uh, especially if you have products which have such a long history. And one of the early ideas to avoid the heel lift was to add silicone. I actually did it by my own <laughs> DIY at home. Silicone stripes on the back of the liner and a bit of silicone stripes on the inside of the cuff. And it actually worked quite okay, but after a while they, they ripped off. Not on, not on a liner, but on the cuff and so I wasn't sure about it. I was like, nah, I want something that is lasting longer. So we came up with the first ideas of the Velcro stripes and I glued them literally by my own on the back of the liner and the back of the cuff. 
And later on, after a few sample tests with, with different glues and stuff, I came up with ideas with the other guys to rivet them. So we first had a sample with two rivets, which I actually even use in a few clips, which worked quite well. It wasn't ripping off, but the edges of the Velcro been like slowly getting off. So we decided to go with four rivets for the final model, like it's now solved, which solved the problem. And now it's lasting pretty good forever, hopefully. <laughs> and the next one, is a tongue. The first sample that I got here, I yeah, I think this was literally the first sample that I received back then. It's used by PowerSlide for other skates, for more big wheel skates. And the first one was pretty good, but it was a bit too thick and too hard for aggressive skating. I felt like maybe a few people will enjoy it, but personally it was just a bit too hard for me. It already had like the holes, so it's more breathable and stuff. And the shape wasn't perfect yet. So we adjusted it and I had like a few samples, like a white one here, which was already softer. Not perfect yet, but it was already better shaped and softer. And then we ended up with the final one that you saw, where the people have been a bit surprised that they have like yellow dots in it. But actually, this is the best material. It's the most, well, the softest, the most comfiest one and has the best fitting for sure. So another thing that we added are those two bolts here on the upper strap because I tested a few samples with just one bolt and it just moved around too much for me and was sometimes out of place. So we added two bolts, now it's really, really good. And also, you can see it right here, a few people asked for it, we added another thread for the people who want to change the sizing and distance and placement of the 45 degree ankle strap. So now you can adjust it for different sizes and different feet and also, if you remove the upper strap, actually, you can see it. The old holes where you could screw in the old padding for the original shadows are still there. So for the people who asked online a lot, yes, you could still modify the skate and yeah, add some older parts if you want or the newer parts and actually make it work with old parts of the original shadow and keep your old skate alive. Yeah, now I think we got most of the upper part maybe some last details like my name is right on top of the ankle flap and you have a tiny loop here it's pretty nice and the material is pretty nice it's like a leatherish style material which is lasting pretty well next part are the saw plates my skates come with a new 2.0 use these shadow saw plates and in combination with the old calf obviously you can see it which I kind of like the most, like the 2.0 calf is pretty good, it's really flexible, but after my ankle injury and my last years of skating, I prefer something a bit more stiffer, higher, more steady. And I think in a combination with the liner, which is pretty high too, it's really good. It's, it gives the right amount of comfort and stability, but still have a good flex. And the next part of the skates that we go into is the frame. Some people have been surprised that I was going for the flute 5 frame, but actually the flute 5 frame is based on the flute 3 frame, which is like the previous model before the flute 4. It was a pretty popular frame back in the day and I used to skate it for many years before the flute 4 came on the market. So I was actually pretty hyped when they released the flute 5 because it's kind of reminding me from what I used to skate and where I started with. And if you grind it down, you can easily use it for anti-rocker too, but it's working really good as a flat frame. In my last pro profile, I used it a bit because I didn't have uh, enough samples, but in the Postscape promo I used it. And normally I use it flat for a while until the uh, groove is grinded in pretty well. And then I usually use it anti-rocker because I'm more into a technical kind of switch up skating and these kind of stuff. And, uh, and I love to do channel grinds and all the weird niche tricks. So it works a tiny bit better for me. So wheels that are coming with my skate are some 60 mm 88 UHAR USD wheels. And it's coming as a full setup with some wicked ABEC 9 bearings. And I think we got all the details. The last thing that I can still add is we updated the buckle. The new buckles are way stronger than the traditional ones. Lasting longer, clicking less. So now after we got more into detail about all the updates on my new Pro Skate, you hopefully understand why it took a bit longer to bring it on the market, especially with the pandemic which is going on and all the delays on production and delivery. It took pretty long to develop it with the updates that I already mentioned in detail, especially when you go like back and forth with the sample 
and try it for a bit longer because I don't just approve something and bring it on a market which I don't stand 100% behind it. So yeah, it took pretty long, but I'm super glad that it's finally out and I hope you enjoyed it as much as I do. And other than that, we got all through. Tiny details like the lacing is going up all the way up to the liner. I love to lace my liners up all the way, but you can easily line, lace it up only to the middle. So yeah, this is my new Pro Skate. It's now in the shops. So go and get yourself some UST Shadows Eugen and